there is a woke feminist retelling of Scott Pilgrim and people on the internet are mad. Not many of them, of course. And before I go into this video and about the problems with woke retellings, I have to say that this is not about politics. It's about art and about a set of tropes that we see nowadays that people refer to as woke. Don't assume anything political out of this. This video is about Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, which is, let's say, it's a retelling of the Brian Lee O'Malley comic book Scott Pilgrim that turned into the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World some 12 years ago. And actually everybody who was in the movie is also cast in this animated series. It's on Netflix. No, Ramona is not black. When I saw that it's coming out, I assumed that it was a remaking of the comic book because when the movie came out, sixth and final volume of the comic book was not released. So there were some differences between the source material and this one. Of course, I hadn't been very diligent in reading about this. I've only read that everybody from the movie was also in the show and it seemed weird to me, like, are they using the voice from the movie and animating over them, what's going on? Then I saw the first episode, episode one, and it started to play out exactly like the first volume of the comic book, uh, Scott Pilgrim's Press to the Life. And you know the drill, Scott Pilgrim is a lovable loser, he lives in Toronto, he plays in a band, He's mooching off his gay roommate Wallace, he meets the girl of his dreams, and then he goes to a party and she's there. She's called Ramona Flowers, she's American, and she moved into Toronto to deliver DVDs for Netflix, because yes, this comic book is very old. It was from the uh, from 2004, and it turned out she's a ninja, and she uses an interdimensional gateway through Scott's head to deliver the DVDs faster, or something, so they go out. However, there is something that they don't know. Scott is dating a high school girl. Knives. And this is brushed over in the animated version because it's 2003, back in 2004, when a grown-ass man is dating a high school girl. He's just a loser. Nowadays, he's a criminal. And you don't want to have that too obvious. So they go out. Ramona is also going to watch his band play, and the bad is awful, and then one of Ramona's evil exes crashes the gig, and he fights with Scott. That's pretty much the first uh, volume of the series. And the premise is that Scott has to fight the seven evil exes of Ramona in order to date her. We've all been there. We've all been there, guys. However, in this version of Scott Pilgrim, things play out different. Matthew Patel, the first Evil X, seems like he won, and Scott Pilgrim appears to be dead. But not quite, because Ramon realizes that no, he's not dead, and he's out to find out who kidnapped him and save him. So we have a reversal of roles, and Ramona is the hero in this one, the protagonist. And I think that Mary Elizabeth Winstead, the actress who played Ramona in the movie, and also plays Ramona here, is the star of the show. She really nails it. Her performance is a standout because he has this take it as it goes delivery of every line that feels quite right and makes this Ramona much more likable than the original. And of course, since we're in an alternative timeline, we have a lot of space for the secondary cast as well as for the evil exes who are not disposable villains of the week here but they're actual characters who grow and evolve. And yes, that's what I would call a woke retelling. You see, in the, or the original is sort of a love story between two very toxic and problematic individuals who have to grow up in order to date. And they do throughout the comic book and there are a lot of heart and a lot of charm of it comes from this. And it also has a very peculiar style. Of course, it relies on tr some tropes that have been dismissed for years like the damsel in distress or fighting in order to get the one you love and that's not a coincidence because this comic book relies a lot on video games from the 90s as well as manga tropes like that are there i mean we have super mario we have Legend of zelda and we have uh, ranma or any other ranma clone i guess so yeah in the original ramona flowers was just a manic pixie dream girl and the dream part is quite literal 
that changes her between every issue and she does that every episode starts with Ramona chasing her hair color and Scott had a fight for and get her as a trophy which yeah it's 2023 it won't pass nowadays and also in the original we will get glimpses of how Scott is ruining the lives of everybody in order to get Ramona. In this show, when Scott Pilgrim takes off, he literally takes off, he's not there. So with Scott being away, we only have Ramona, who has to do the confrontations with her exes, her past. So this lack of Scott makes things way less violent, but not always better. I mean, okay, the evil exes live, but then again, somewhere in the show it's hinted that the evil exes will respawn after being defeated by Scott. So I'm not sure what's going on here, but yes, things are not better. They're just less clear-cut and less violent. Brian Lee O'Malley didn't want to do a rehash of his original comic book. He wanted to do a current day retelling of it, and I think he gets it. A lot of the things that made Skull Pilgrim a success, they're here too. There's a lot of humor, a lot of heart, and zany fights, and this uh, very unique world where it's very video gamey and alt rock and surreal. And yes, Cold Pilgrim was big millennial humor, I have to say that. It uh, defines a whole generation and according to some people it ruined a whole generation. So yeah, I enjoyed this show towards some extent, but not as much as I enjoyed the movie. Initially I liked the show, it gets a lot of uh, cues out from the movie, especially on episode 1. In the middle of episode 3 I was like, I'll make a video about this show because I love the Scott Pilgrim movie and I'll start the video with the line There is a woke feminist retelling of Scott Pilgrim and nobody complains about it and then I got egg on my face because I watched the rest of the show and I started to notice the cracks uh, it happened halfway through and I think I should change this video from a review of Scott Pilgrim takes off into a Scott Pilgrim and things that can go wrong in woke retellings, woke in quotes. And I kind of get why people complain about the woke retellings of everything, uh, because now I'm seeing this in a property I care about, and also in a property that turning it woke shouldn't be a problem, because it appeals to the woke crowd, okay? I mean, that's a uh, bible for a lot of hipster millennials that became woke as uh, time went along. So yeah, what are the three problems? that woke retellings have as depicted in Scott Pilgrim. The first one is that those woke retellings don't stand on their own. And as I'm watching this series, I was appreciating something a lot. Since Scott is not there, a lot of things change. The characters remain the same and they react as their core character. And, but because Scott is a terrible person, and we have to establish that Scott is terrible, he's very boneheaded, very little-minded, very obsessive, he wants to get what is his and often disregards other people or just forgets about them and their needs. Yeah, I mean, that's Scott. He will fight for what he wants and then be Scott. He will lead off everybody and he will ruin lives because of that. Because he's not there and we don't see him interacting with others, we notice the difference. Scott not being there and how things change. So yeah, that's a big one. Then you have the Ramonas. Ramona is also terrible. In this version, she seems less of an asshole, less immature. But still, she's kind of passive, kind of immature at her core, and that's the problem. And that's how she was in the original comic too. That's her character. But because Scott is not the protagonist and Ramona is, you empathize more with Ramona. And let's be honest, this girl goes on and confronts everybody because of a guy she went on a date with. <laughs> I mean, she's equally bad as Scott. And when you get to why she hooked up with some of the people she hooked up with, the reasons why they're very egotistical and mature as well. And when you get to the end of uh, the season, and the evil X behind everything reveals himself. It makes perfect sense. He should be there because that's a show about Ramona's evil exes. And he's the ultimate evil ex. Also, you have to ask yourself, does Ramona fall for evil people that, are, that turn out to be her exes? Or does she make them into those evil exes? 
But if you have not watched the movie or read the comics and you watch the show, all of this goes away. It's all there. It's just a show about a girl who wants to find this guy who seems like an asshole. She has to confront her past and all those guys she ruined. And all those guys are weird, but I guess they make amends with their past. Oh, and of course, the gal. I forgot the gal. All those guys and the gal, they have to make amends and uh, go on with their lives and live who, with who they are and be who they are. It makes so less sense if you haven't read the original. I think that this is a problem with a lot of the woke retellings out there. If you're unfamiliar with the original source or if you're unfamiliar with the tropes being deconstructed, those shows can stand and they may even feel as a commentary track over the original about how things will be different nowadays or a fanfic that was turned into a full show. The reason why will bring me to the second and the biggest offender in any entertainment. The second problem with woke retellings is that the drama takes the back seat. This show for me starts to fall apart when I realize that it's all about Ramona making amends with her past and everybody is being friends and the cool fights are less cool, I guess. I mean, there are cool, two cool fights throughout the... no, three of them. There are three cool fights in the show. There is Patel versus Gideon, there is uh, Ramona versus Roxy, and there is also the final fight. And yeah, I guess that the Lucas uh, versus Paparazzi fight will also do. But yeah, where are the cool fights? That's a that's called Pigum Show. There should be huge, epic, surreal fights. The drama was not just there. And I know that this draw called Pilgrim is built around the fighting to get the girl is lazy but it works because it is simple to understand and you have this what comes next um, dopamine hit or yes now they can be together but kind of style and there is also this sort of a progression in the clock like we have the seven evil exes you have to win them in order to date Ramona and also we have the is slowly being revealed, being mysterious, and Scott and Ramona growing up and going out together and having fights and problems. Yeah, uh, it works. Here it's Ramona suspecting that someone is behind this and makes a list and then they all become friends and has to scratch them off her list. And there's a lot of emotional closure and that's healthy. That's a great way to live your life, but it's not dramatic. It lowers the stakes, it makes the zinc locks tick slower, it just talks and some gags, and yes, there is this mystery of where is Scott, but honestly, everybody's better without Scott. Why should Scott we get back to Scott? It's not dramatic. Actually, Ramona is the villain here, because everybody's fine without Scott Pilgrim, and Ramona wants to break him back, because they kissed. Yeah, the drama is not there. And then we have Sex Bomb Bomb without Scott, and they're doing great and going places. Everybody's happy without Scott. Why ruin this? Yes, I know. I mean, I know what this show is talking about. It's a healthier way to cope with life, not be obsessive, and get over the past, and make amends, and go on, be yourself. That's a great way to live your life. But entertainment is not life. And it shouldn't be. Entertainment is something you cannot live, but you want to experience somehow. And the third problem, which I know it would be controversial to some people, but I think that the woke retellings come with their own baggage of problematic material. Uh, I think that the biggest offender is episode five where a certain character goes bisexual for Wallace and it's it's played like a gag. It's true to both the characters, so I'll give that to Amali. But you know what it's like, it's too much on the nose. 
and it turns, it makes, it start. That's where the show becomes from a let's make comments and go on and have some cool fights into a let's have a gagathon of things until it's over. And I believe I should remind here that there are actually less LGBTQIA characters in the show compared to the original comic. And so is episode six. So that's where it goes apart. And of course we have the, let's replace the male character with a female one and make her badass. It's just, uh, all right, it's, it's not bad, but it's done to death already. And I get why people would be like, ah, yeah, it's the perfect female lead again. Uh, which is lazy. In my opinion, um, if you want to elevate the uh, women, just make them like the 80s, being equal or worthy companions. Uh, and I think that out of modern properties, the only franchise that did that was the DCU. Which, yeah, it's something I'll give the DCU guys, right? Uh, but yeah, Wonder Woman and Trevor were great together in Wonder Woman. And... Um, Aquaman has this Jack Barton way throughout the entire movie. Mira was there to introduce him to this world and help him. But uh, Aquaman was still the protagonist and the Jack Barton of the story. So yeah, here if you just take the man out and say everything will be better without him and have the girl be super duper wow, it's like, alright guys, we've seen that before. In 10 years' time, we will watch the shows and be like, oh my, what was going on there? Here? And this is very problematic. Uh, I mean, the movie did a great job of lambooning a lot of the problematic aspects of the comic book. And the comic book, and the comic book does take the time to get into who both characters are and uh, address their failings and also give them a redemption storyline so it's fully aware of how problematic the premise is and by the end it works to rectify that um so did i hate the show no i don't think there is enough to hate uh, i think there's enough to like in this show but there is enough to make you like it less than the comic book or the movie and to be honest I kind of understand where it goes and I kind of want to see what goes in a second season because Scott and Ramona dealt with their evil exes. They, at least Ramona seems to have grown up, maybe Scott as well, but I want to see where it will go and how will they deal with the true villains of the show themselves. And I think that the team behind this is conscious of that and they can give us something interesting, or maybe give us a season about Scott's evil exes. I mean, there has been no closure between Scott and Envy. And we don't know who else Scott dated, to be honest. Well, we know of Knives and uh, Kim Pine. But also, there's no closure between them, I guess. So yeah, there's enough material to do a great second season. And, of course, Scott Pilgrim hasn't committed the greatest sin of woke retelling. It hasn't dismissed the fans yet, and I hope it won't. So I hope you like this video, and honestly, if you want to get rid of those problematic tropes and do a modern retelling with modern sensibilities, keep an eye out of those brief laws. Don't be too meta, keep the drama coming, and don't be lazy. That's all. And also respect the fans. If you make something good out of uh, retelling, even though it's very progressive and very uh, modern and feminist, where a few year old was, for instance, but you keep the core of what makes it the original take, fans will love it. Or at least most of them. So, yeah. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.